You still work at the White House, right? Call me. I solved stuff. Send. <laughs> Hello? Blue? It's Gordy. Hey, there you are. What are you doing? Can you hear me? Yeah, fine. Yeah, I got you in my headphones. So the president still listens to you? All right, tell me you got something fresh and brilliant I can use. I'm telling you, this is it. I don't know if the world's ready for it, but this is the answer. Okay, recording this. What's your premise? I came up with a minor rule change that'll correct our course towards sharing our gifts and not just chasing money. Normal people dig that whole American dream thing, man. To get anything through this dysfunctional gridlock we're stuck in, tea partiers to occupiers all got to back this. Everyone alive, basically. Sure, so we let the dead people pay the bills we all agree our grandkids shouldn't have to. A death tax? Oh hell no, an inheritance cap. You can leave tax-free money to as many people or charities as you want, but you can only leave, say, up to $5 million for each individual after you die. To spread it around so more people spend and stoke commerce. And so people don't feel the need to overcollect anymore. You can still accumulate unlimited wealth and disperse it wherever you choose when you're alive, okay? But after you die, you can only leave five million to each person. To as many different people as you have money left for. Living relatives or total strangers out of the phone book, if you want. In general, the idea is a firm cap on what you can leave individuals to put a lid on it. The only exception being if you've created a certain number of good paying jobs, you get a credit to double the cap to one person. Okay, so incentives tied to job production spurs them to invest. Fine. But what happens if someone dies sitting on a buttload of assets that are unallocated? Say they don't know, love, or want to help anyone. If you didn't spend it enough when you were alive and you run out of deserving heirs, excess leftovers go directly to pay down the debt. Oh, uh huh, uh huh, okay. Until there's a surplus and China's asking us for a loan. And then everyone can vote on whether to keep the inheritance cap or not. You think old people are sitting on that much money that this would pay the national debt? Gordy, it's not with the undesignated inheritance that we pay the debt. It's how money gets spent now to get around the cap, to bequeath money to their favorite people. People start gifting their mansions, Lear jets, private islands, whatever, bags of money. And we charge a reasonable gift tax on all those transfers at an appreciably lower rate than the current inheritance cap would be, right? So they get a deal. The transfer of wealth starts to become more of a supervised process. And generations can enjoy it together. It's a whole new mindset. Well, change is a tough sell when you're telling people what they can and can't do with their life's work. Why would oil barons and central banking cartels agree to this? Explain it to them. They were giving them more control of their money and taking less tax from everyone alive. It's so easy to use loopholes to avoid it. It's almost just symbolic, really. But by putting it out there, people will at least evaluate our intent and be forced to reconsider what they leave. Well, you might convince the Warren Buffett and Bill Gates types. But how are we going to convince Paris Hilton? Oh, man. If you can't make it with a $5 million head start, maybe you weren't cut out to make it. If Paris feels entitled to more, she can ask her folks to use job creation credits to give her a more generous leg up. Since Mr. Hilton employs so many people, he meets incentives that allow him to leave all kinds of extra for Paris, so there you go. If people just take a moment to evaluate how this can work better for him, they'll want to pack it. Hang on a second. I have to navigate a sketchy bitch. The snowpack is so thin this year. So, we still let them be selfish hoarders and give them tax breaks? Yes, but this makes trickle down more than a theory. We rig it to work automatically. The elite and powerful are altruistic or not. This makes sure it happens right away. Well, say I was rich, but didn't create hundreds of jobs and still felt compelled to leave massive wealth to my descendants, what do I do? Buy a crayon drawing from your grandkid for a million dollars. Hire your kids, take them helicopter skiing, call them guides and pay them a billion a day. Sure, they pay income tax on it, but they could buy stuff, write it off as business expenses, so you feed the economy one way or another while still stashing away enough for your kids before you die. If you only want to set up three people in a will, 
plan to croak sitting on about 15 million dollars in assets, right? That's the new goal in life. You've got to use it or lose it. I'd hope it'd encourage folks to leave some of their leftovers to their fellow countrymen in times like these, but either way, the system will thrive wildly again. Most folks are proud to pitch in for their country, but what they don't want is for you to decide that for them. We'd phase this in over time so they can make arrangements. Sure, it wouldn't kick in for a year or two, but, but the effects would be immediate. Accountants get busy reworking stuff, kids get their folks' money now, and the race is on to spend, invest in new sustainable companies, creating waves of new jobs, stoking oceans of consumers with paychecks to spend. Listen, I have to go. I'll call you in a couple of days. It's interesting. Keep thinking about what could go wrong, who's going to gripe, and what we can tell them. All right? All right. Thanks. I'll talk to you soon. Hello? Hey, Pluto. It's Gordon. What's going on? What up, brother man? All right, Pluto. I found out over the next 50 years, we're expecting over $41 trillion in inherited wealth to be transferred, mostly to the already affluent, though. Sounds promising, right? Hang on. Can you hear me? Hold on. I'm almost to the top. Are you skiing? You dog. Carve and snowboard. Okay, go ahead. Okay, turns out, estate planners are used to reworking arrangements all the time. Inheritance rules have changed 19 times in the past 35 years. Really? But today's laws already let you give away your first five million tax-free. Then after that, people are taxed between 35 and 55 percent. No, that sucks. It's got to be a firm limit. If you take a slice, you just motivate the need to gather more to keep more, you see? You keep making overcollecting absolutely more imperative if you take a percentage. Oh. A hard cap has a deep psychological effect, making over-earning a waste of time. That's critical. The point is to change the point. Seems pointless with such huge loopholes. You need the loopholes. You gotta let them be corrupt. Gouge customers, shortchange workers, a clear-cut 2,000-year-old forest for outrageous profit if they want, but, but this would take away some of the drive that might entice them to want to chop down more than they need. This pulls the carpet out from under every evil plan I can think of. It makes winning fun only if you like giving and being generous. After a certain point, you're just earning to give it away, so you better feel good about the service you provide or, or who you're doing it for, right? People's legacies become what cool, helpful things they were able to set in motion for others. Are you still the poorest guy in the most expensive resort place to live on the planet? So funny how you work that, man. <laughs> Remember that old nasty van you used to drive? <laughs> All right now, fancy pants. Can we get back to the point? I feel like I gotta sell you on it. Well, we'd have to sell it. What do you need, a slogan? Pass it on when you pass on. How's that? Sounds more like... If you don't spend it, we will. People are reluctant to change. Even when it serves them and helps their race to thrive? Smart, rich folks who want their grandkids to have a better life? They must be able to see that back, and this is a great way to leave them a better world. So how did they ever start that salary cap system in pro football? If prima donna NFL quarterbacks agreed to that a few years back, so the league could be competitive and remain profitable, then surely... People are fiercely loyal to their family and possessive of what they're due. Kids are gonna gripe about sharing their family fortunes with a pool boy. So they'll act more worthy than dad's nurse. It makes humans try and be better people to each other. Hell, you may not like all your future descendants anyway, right? We all have weirdos in our family we don't necessarily want to give unlimited power to just because they share our name. Let our grandsons decide how our future great-grandsons are compensated by knowing them personally and judging what they deserve. Isn't that reasonable? I don't know. It's different. Fine. Then just hit up the debt crisis panic to pitch it. Show them the math on that. What'd you say, 40 trillion in 50 years? If folks pre-gift even half of that to get it where they want before they ski off a cliff, at what rate, 20% gift taxes, say? Well, that's like, that's four trillion you'd take in in the next couple years alone, not counting all the stimulus benefits from every imaginable angle. Well, that would be a decent start. But most of these guys' assets are tied up in corporations. Are you suggesting if Mr. Walmart chokes on a pretzel that we have to sell off his empire and distribute his estate in $5 million chunks? He'd have arrangements for a good team of investors to buy it, or he'd start promoting more workers into middle management roles with employee co-ownership or something. How do they do it now? You gotta be able to set up 
foundations and organizations that can roll on their own. Okay, I'm not really sure. Work all that stuff out. Probably need some international restrictions, too. Given local groups of investors a competitive advantage over single foreigners who aren't yet bound by caps. Push the G20 for worldwide adoption with whatever trade incentives it'd take, but meanwhile, add some sensible protections and jam it past Congress with some emergency jobs order act. Call it something patriotic, like the home of the free decree. Well, we're pretty much out there. Uh, nothing's easy. The simple cap's getting complicated. But it's so worth doing. Now you're remembered for your contributions that had merit. Ideas that people are grateful for. When we're working around your starting point, folks will be forced to at least reconsider their legacy. Once they got their people taken care of, maybe they'd pursue something else. Not for conquering profits, but for creating what they've always dreamed of. Maybe you pay your employees more to keep them dedicated and happy. Wait, conscientious capitalism? Reaping reasonable profits over maximum profits? That's never gonna happen with stockholders' expectations. With a mental ceiling on financial aspirations, maybe stockholders would tolerate just decent returns from stable, ethically directed companies with a devoted workforce of happy people. People's morals evolve. Today, they sort trash to recycle. Tomorrow, recycling good fortunes and investing in your species may be valued. Enough becomes enough. Problem is, the only people this would annoy are the ones in power. Some extreme occupiers might rather the whole system fail than to tweak it so it works again. But these are reasonable, gradual stepping stones that bridge us to where everything's fair. Slowly mixing in powerful corporate royalty with the rest of us over the next few generations. This transitions us forward without being totally unfair to those who have taken to and done well in today's system. Well, it does give protesters something to ask for, a specific demand they can force. All right, I gotta run, but I'll see what I can do. All right, do it, man. Keep me posted, brother. Oh, my God. Hello? Professor Pluto, please. Hey, buddy. Hey. Hey, just got a sec. But want to let you know, we've got something drafted we're going to push for. Oh, wow. So watch the news and root for us. We're going to raise the debate on the inheritance cap. That's awesome. Make it as public as you can. Do it. Give everyone the answer. Well, we're trying to plant a little seed that matters. <laughs> well, that's great news. Thanks for making an old man feel worthwhile. All right, get the word out there. Then regular folks may choose to adopt it on their own, despite what Congress does or doesn't do. It <laughs> came through with an angle everyone was missing. Any way we could vote on it? Did you ever hear of representative government? But hey, I gotta go. Representatives made sense when we'd send a guy on horseback to Washington. Hell, if we can have secure online banking and vote for our favorite American Idol, can't we get rid of Congress and just... Hello? Oh, he hung up on me?